Welcome to This Week in Astrology. This is episode number 550 for September 7th through 13, 2020. What's new? We have Mars stationing retrograde, that's the background on the video, and the aspects that color that retrograde, that's the headliner for the week. We also have expansive Jupiter turning direct and five bonus aspects. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm your host, Benjamin Bernstein, broadcasting from thisweekinastrology.com. I simultaneously record these weekly forecasts as an audio podcast and a video, so you can choose whichever format you like. The video version includes my chart graphics for things like lunations and aspect patterns. You can also see these graphics if you read my forecasts online. Just go to astroshaman.com, click blog on the menu bar, then choose the astrology forecasts category. Please leave me a rating, review, or comment wherever you're getting this episode so others like you can find it. What's old as we come into this week, we have a waning moon and five retrograde planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, Chiron, and Uranus. Let's get into our daily events. First up on Wednesday, September 9th, we have one of our bonus aspects. We have Sun, Trine, Jupiter, Sun, 17 Virgo, Jupiter, 17 Capricorn. Just look at the planets alone. The sun is your core identity. It's your vitality. Jupiter is expansion, hope, joy, optimism. Trine is an easy, automatic flowing connection. For most people, this will be pretty awesome. You'll feel expanded vitality. You'll feel possibly greater happiness, possibly a greater natural energy toward whatever your quest or mission is in life. Uh, these tend to be really positive, helpful things. If we add the fact that the sun's in Virgo, Jupiter, which tends to expand whatever it connects to, will be amplifying your ability to serve others. I do recommend uh, the highest level of Virgo, in my opinion, is to serve others with what you love to do and what you're really good at doing. You, you, this, you end the service and you say, wow, I'd love to do that again. Uh, Virgo is also really good for health. So focusing on your own health or the health of others could be awesome. Um, by the way, I'm right now reading an amazing book my doctor recommended. Most doctors are very not savvy on nutrition, but I'm lucky to have a doctor who is. The book is called How Not to Die, um, and it's just amazing. It written about five years ago. I'm just floored at how awesome and how much incredibly good, helpful information I'm getting to help me be more healthy. So there's a Virgo theme for you. Also, Virgo is about getting the details right, dot the I's, cross the T's, organize it, get it all lined up just like it should be. So all those kind of things, whether it's service or health or organization or fine tuning, all these are amplified with the Virgo sun, try Jupiter. So do with that what you will. Also today on the 9th, we have our headline event for the whole week, which is Mars turning retrograde. That happens uh, today, again on the 9th at 6.22 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. At that point, Mars is in Aries at 28 degrees, eight minutes. He'll turn direct again in just over two months on November 13th at 7.36 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. He'll do that around 15 degrees Aries. Of all the personal planet retrogrades, Mars can be the most significant. Mercury and Mars, forgive me, Mercury and Venus can have notable effects, but neither of them can pack a punch like Mars. This is especially true with Mars retrograding entirely within Aries, a sign that he rules and which shares his planetary meanings. Mars retrograde also stands out because it's more rare. Mercury goes retrograde three times a year and Venus reverses direction every 18 months, but Mars only stations retrograde every two years. Mars retrograde is a great time to reflect on all the ways that the red planet expresses in your life. How skillfully are you embodying the roles of the warrior, pioneer, or entrepreneur? How's your sex life? How good are you at getting things started and taking fast, effective action? This can also be an important time to reflect on the dark side of Mars. Are you having any challenges with anger, aggression, or violence? How about impulsiveness or sexuality that is harmful or non-consensual? Mars retrograde is not the best time to start important new things. If an important action can be delayed until Mars is direct, that would be optimal. Of course, two months is a long time and not everything can wait that long. So use your best judgment. Aspects. 
the aspects a planet makes as it turns retrograde add additional meaning to its retrograde period. This Mars retrograde includes two aspect patterns, a T-square and a mystic rectangle. The T-square is the most important Mars retrograde aspect pattern. It includes a Mars-Juno opposition with both planets squaring Saturn and Pluto. I've written about this T-square before. Technically, it, it could be thought of as two different T-squares, Mars-Juno-Saturn and Mars-Juno-Pluto. Here's the relevant excerpt edited for context from my August 7 forecast entry, which was titled 75 Days of Committed Partnership T-Squares. Here's the quote. Even the best committed partnerships might feel challenged due to T-squares that include the Mars-Juno opposition. This opposition creates the core meaning of challenge in these critical relationships. The T-squares that are, I'm now not quoting, I'm now giving you contemporary. The T-squares still in effect are Mars-Juno-Pluto T-square, that's through September 27th. And there's also the T-square with Mars-Juno and Saturn, that's good through October 2nd. The greater the challenge, the greater the possible breakthrough. Committed partners who work skillfully with these intense energies can emerge with their relationships functioning at a whole new level of awareness. In my August 13 forecast entry, which I called Five Months of Mars Squaring Pluto, Saturn, and Jupiter, I noted, on its retrograde pass, Mars squares Saturn on September 28th, Pluto on October 9th, and Jupiter on October 19th. He takes a break from the stimulation starting on November 2nd, when he retrogrades more than five degrees past Jupiter. For more on these effects, especially the sexual potentials of the Mars-Pluto square, read my August 13 forecast. I'll conclude my discussion of this T-square here with my final paragraph from that forecast. Even though Jupiter is not part of the T-square Mars makes as it turns retrograde, the effects I describe on August 13 still apply. So far, the Jupiter-Saturn-Pluto triple conjunction has brought us paradigm-shifting events such as the pandemic and broader acceptance of the Black Lives Matter movement. Astrology is archetypally predictive, not concretely predictive, so I don't know exactly what further shakeups this potent trio will bring us. But with Mars energizing Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto for five of the next six months, during which we have the U.S. presidential election, I'm confident that they'll be shaking up our world a lot more before they're done. And let me add, this is not in my written preparation, but um, there is no more normal folks. We are moving into a whole new paradigm. And if we are willing to step into it more consciously, develop our awareness, step into unconditional love the very best we can, the new world we move into will be a far better one than the one we're leaving behind. But trust me, there is no more normal. Uh, better to be thinking not in terms of how can I reestablish what I was comfortable with, but wow, how can I take the current disruption and unsettledness and create a new and superior reality from that? Now, there's also a mystic rectangle as part of this Mars retrograde. As I noted in my September 3rd forecast, a Mars-Juno lunar nodes mystic rectangle offers flowing support to committed partnerships that align with your soul purpose. With the lunar nodes in the axis of communication, north node in Gemini, south node in Sagittarius, harmonious communication between the two of you is supported. Individual aspects. As Mars turns retrograde, it also squares Venus. This invites additional reflection on relationship and creativity. Mars also semi-squares the Gemini moon. This invites you to contemplate the themes of home, family, security, and shadow work, as well as learning and communication. So that's it on Mars retrograde. Let's go on to Thursday, September 10. We have a bonus aspect, Mercury opposing Chiron. That's Mercury 8 Libra, Chiron 8 Aries. Here we have some commonality. Mercury is about learning and communication. Chiron is the mentor. So obviously the most easy way to use this is in terms of, wow, how can I go deeper into learning stuff or receiving good counsel from people or giving good advice to others. Um, Mercury and Chiron also more loosely share a common meaning. This is a little subtler, but Chiron's healing. Mercury in the context of medical astrology rules the hands and arms. Um, and that, of course, if you're an energetic healer, uh, very commonly you send energy out your hands. 
So this, in a more subtle way, also supports energetic healing. So if you're into that, giving or receiving, that's supported with the mercury car in opposition. Finally, Mercury's in Libra. Libra says, I like to communicate with others. Obviously, the whole communication thing is supported by that. And also, Libra is creativity. So uh, since Chiron has a sense of mentoring, uh, counseling, which I sort of loosely associate with refinement or editing, you know, this also could be a nice thing for editing or refining work you've already creatively started. So those are some possibilities for that mercury Chiron opposition on September 10. What about Friday, September 11? We have a bonus aspect here, a Sun-Neptune opposition. Sun, 20 Virgo, Neptune, 20 Pisces. Uh, a Sun-Neptune opposition, let's just take the planets. The Sun is you, Neptune is divine oneness. So a Sun-Neptune opposition is always a great time to go deeper into your spiritual practice, um, my own bias is not to just go out of body and just float around in bliss states and then come back to the same old stuff I was dealing with in my body. I like to bring the divine to me, or more specifically, I invoke it and it comes. And therefore, if you are wanting to have an embodied experience of divinity, not just occasional relief with meditation or any kind of spiritual practice, but have that divine with you as a constant abiding presence, making your whole life more awesome, then the Sun-Neptune opposition is great for that. I'll put a link in the show notes to my embodied awakening invocation in case you don't already have a tool that quickly and efficiently can merge you with your higher self and have you function in that beautiful state all day, every day. We also, with Neptune, have not just spirituality, but inspired creativity. It's other main positive effect. So this also could be a fabulous energy for just getting all kind of creative downloads. Now with the sun in Virgo, which is refinement, um, you could go either way. You could just say, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna worry too much about Virgo. I just got my, my essence, my, one of the subtler expressions of sun is creativity. Uh, Neptune coming in with divinely inspired. Wow, what a great time to just get all kind of creative downloads. If you're already into a project and you've already gotten the main juicy download and now your ego is involved and you're refining and editing and making it the final polished gem, then bring in the Virgo and you can refine. And of course, uh, it, it's not necessarily just one or the other. Some people can you know, be uh, in that flow state and as appropriate, bring in the refinement quality, tune it up a little and then go back to inspiration. That's kind of how I write my forecasts. So it can merge, but um, I've just seen instances even in my own experience where you had the, the creative download coming in and you got into editing mode and refining mode and it, it, it completely just wiped out the initial download that wasn't complete. So if you're going to combine creativity and refinement, make sure you can actually work efficiently in that mode and not have the refinement editing mind just shut down the whole creative thing. All right, Saturday, September 12th. We start with a bonus aspect and then get on to our other main event. So the bonus aspect on the 12th is Mercury Quincunx Uranus. Mercury's at 10 Libra, Uranus is at 10 Taurus. Um, here we have two planets that are considered related. Uh, Mercury is the lower octave of Uranus. Mercury is human mind, uh, mental, rational. Uranus is just divine knowing, just bam, there's the knowledge. You know, like a lightning strike or a sudden insight, a eureka, an aha. So uh, Mercury and Uranus have a natural resonance and get along really well together. Now, the fact that they're in a quincunx, which is an adjustment angle, says maybe they don't get automatically connected like they would with a more flowing aspect, but you can still, with a quincunx, adjust and connect. So here, I would say, if you're one classic way this could play out, if you're getting an intuitive hit and you're mentally resisting it for some reason, I would not advise that. Um, I have on my own experience, plus literally interviewing hundreds of clients over many years, always asking them when the time is right, hey, when you get an intuitive hit and you know it's your intuition, you know it in your bones, you know it in your gut, it, it wasn't a mental or rational construct, you just knew all of a sudden your divine self popped it down like a text message. Uh, when you follow those guidances, do you get better outcomes or do you get better outcomes when you do something else? You either don't do anything at all or you do something other than what you were guided to do. And to a person, no exceptions, hundreds of questions, they all say, wow, things go better when I follow the download. And that just makes sense to me because my, my shamanic understanding is when you're born, you've got your higher self and it, you know, 
sends, it needs to come into this human incarnation. And for the most of us, uh, the human gets amnesia and, and for the purposes of soul growth, that part of you must be ignorant of much of what it is, which is true, awesome, complete divinity. Um, but the divine self is allowed to drop down hints because what happens is part of the soul splits off and animates the human, part of it stays back to watch and to drop hints because Earth is a free will zone. Uh, so anyhow, my, my experience and belief is that when you get an honest to God intuitive hit, you can take it to the bank, it's infallible, your higher self is your number one absolute best guide for what your human self should be doing. And uh, my experience has been the more I've just eased into and followed those without question, the more awesome my life becomes. And so I highly recommend that strategy if you're open to it. With Mercury Quincunx Uranus, uh, you may need to make some kind of adjustment. That could be the adjustment of the mind relaxing and allowing itself to be guided by the information and taking action on it. Um, it could even be an adjustment of having to make some shift in your habit pattern so you can get the intuitive hit in the first place. Some, not everyone hears their intuitive hits, but uh, just taking time to relax, uh, take some time where you're just still not being stimulated by anything, either meditating or just chilling or just doing something really mindless. A lot like it was always said that Einstein got his great ideas when he was just out for a walk in nature, not thinking about anything in particular. Um, just leave some spaciousness in your, in your head to allow those things to pop in. Because if you're constantly hyper-stimulating yourself with input, your higher self might be really trying to get a message through and you're just drowning it out. So in whatever way, just leave some space for those hits to come in. So again, that's Mercury Quincunx Uranus on Saturday, September 12th. But our major event on this day is Jupiter turning direct. And this happens at 8.41 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That'll happen at 17 degrees, 24 minutes Capricorn. Now, Jupiter has been direct for four months ever since May 14. He turned retrograde back at 27 degrees Capricorn. So he's backed up about 10 degrees while he's been retrograding. Here are the main themes I offered for your reflection back in my forecast on May 14, when Jupiter turned retrograde. Now that he's direct, which ones would it serve you to get in gear on? So here's the Jupiter themes. Higher education, religion, philosophy, the meaning of life, foreign countries, cultures, and customs, long distance travel, journeys, quests, and adventures, joy, excitement, and enthusiasm, wisdom givers, such as professors, philosophers, and gurus, expansion, optimism, hope. Jupiter in Capricorn. Now, Jupiter was retrograde entirely within Capricorn, which has another layer of meaning. Capricorn is Jupiter's natural complement. Capricorn tends to contract, which can keep Jupiter from expanding too much. Capricorn is serious, which can restrain Jupiter from excessive partying. Capricorn is an extremely practical sign. It loves systems and procedures that get things done efficiently. In contrast, Jupiter can get excessively whimsical and starry-eyed. So Jupiter's placement in Capricorn makes it easier for you to create useful plans and strategies. Now that the solar system's largest gas giant is direct, these can help you move forward in your Jupiterian goals. Conclusion, as I shared when Jupiter turned retrograde on May 14, one of Jupiter's most important meanings is hope. For me, this is the vision of a more wonderful future reality. Especially in challenging times like these, the story you tell yourself about the meaning of your life, another important Jupiter theme, is of critical importance. Believing the story that you live in a cruel and capricious universe in which life has no meaning is a certain recipe for misery. But believing the story that you were born for a reason with a crucial soul mission to fulfill puts things in a much more positive light. Believing that challenges happen not to you, but for you to catalyze your growth and expand your capabilities can inspire you with the energy and enthusiasm you need to master them. Ancient astrologers called Jupiter the great benefic, the luckiest planet in the sky. Remember that now that Jupiter is direct, no matter how dire a situation seems, good things can always come from it. The greater the challenge, the greater the breakthrough once you've mastered it. Let's do one last bonus aspect. This is for Sunday, September 13, Venus trine Chiron. 
Venus eight Leo, and Chiron is eight Aries. But Venus Chiron alone. So let's think about what the most likely way we could work with this is. Chiron is healing and teaching. Venus is relating. So Venus, I relate with you. Try an easy automatic connection. Chiron. So that really supports mentoring, giving advice, that sort of thing. Could also be healing because Chiron is healing and Venus is also relating with someone, which obviously supports healing in a subtler way. Venus, creativity, Chiron, again, either advising you on how to do creativity, a sense of refinement and uh, getting it right, could be there too. Now with Venus in Leo, that kind of puts a big uh, highlight up by the creative part because Venus in Leo loves to express its creativity. So um, this could be either just putting your creativity out there in a really great way. Um, Chiron would suggest also you're either mentoring with creativity or being mentored with creativity, the, the things I said earlier. So the other thing is Leo is the leader. Venus, again, relating with others as a leader in order to give them good advice might be another way to play that. So those are some fun ways you could play with that Venus Chiron trine here on Sunday the 13th. And as a reminder, um, most of the personal planet aspect lasts about a week either side. I wanna give big thanks to all the listeners who replied to my question last week. I asked whether I should continue to include bonus aspects in this podcast that are not in my written interpretations. Obviously I did that. And as it happened, the response was unanimously positive. So I'm gonna keep those going. With the sun in Virgo, I'm continuing my refinement process. Here's my next question. How about those asteroid goddesses? Do you like the degree to which I'm using Ceres, Juno, Pallas Athena, and Vesta, especially in aspect patterns, or do you feel I'm giving them too much emphasis? Once again, I'd love to know your opinion. Please leave me a comment on this episode's blog post or email me at astroshamanbenjamin at gmail.com or text me at 828-338-9852. Thank you. Everyone's welcome to participate in Most Live Awakening Plus calls for free. These calls support your individual healing and awakening and also support the current global spiritual awakening. Here are brief descriptions of our September events. This Tuesday, September 8, 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Shamanic Awakening Ceremony. This intense experience combines the healing power of shamanism with my invocation cycle for embodied awakening. It usually lasts about two hours, maybe a little less. We begin by invoking safe, sacred space, supported by many powerful divine beings of love and light. Then we do a series of invocations to help each person move into embodied awakening. During the healing invocation, I ratchet up the energy to high intensity. I typically use voice, rattles, and drum to help clear your heavy energies. When the celestial energy comes in later, I may use angelic chimes or other high vibration instruments. This will help you move into your deepest possible awakened state. Yummy. Uh, next on Tuesday, September 15, also 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, we have group healing, immunity boosting, and awakening. Obviously, enhanced immunity is good to have, especially during this pandemic. So we call it in along with embodied awakening and healing. That one should last 60 to 90 minutes. And on September 22nd, that Tuesday, 7 p.m., that's 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, we have a constellation process with guest facilitator V. This will be unlike anything we've ever done, a subtle, powerful, and amazing process. Note the 7 p.m. start time, as I said. We're starting early since the call might actually last more than two hours. Doing a constellation takes some time, but it's a subtle, but ultimately, as I said, very powerful and transformative process. And uh, the facilitator is getting information back to me in the next day or two, so I should be able to give you a little more on the next podcast, and I'll certainly have more info on the post on astroshaman.com that gives the details about these events even more deeply than I just did. We also, every week, have our newer support call that's running Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. We create our sacred container, invoke embodied awakening, and then flow energy to support the more awakened new earth currently blossoming. The divine always rewards us with personal spiritual upgrades and profound bliss. And these events last less than an hour usually. Thanks for being here. Once again, I'm Benjamin Bernstein with astroshaman.com. I can serve you with astrology readings, 
shamanic healing, awakening activation, astrological event timing, and one-of-a-kind life coaching. All my one-on-one services are equally effective in person or long distance. And during the pandemic, I've dropped my rates significantly. I also offer an unbeatable price on Solar Fire, the number one astrology software for Windows. And as I mentioned, I run the Awakening Plus online membership for spiritual support. You can learn all about this and more at astroshaman.com. And if you want to see the show notes for this show, go to astroshaman.com slash 550. Again, astroshaman.com 550. Please reach out if you have any questions. My email is astroshamanbenjamin at gmail.com. My number for voice and text, 828-338-9852. I would love to connect with you. We're wrapping it up. Once again, please leave me a rating, review, or comment wherever you're getting this episode so others like you can find it. This Week in Astrology is honored to be chosen as one of the internet's top 10 astrology podcasts. Check out our website where you can hear the show and subscribe to podcast updates. And if you have not already done so, be sure to click the link in the show notes for two chances to win a free Astrology Plus session with me each month. Even if a while back you sent in your chart data to enter that, that old system's done. You have to go in and do this name and email thing to be in the drawing for the free giveaways now. So thanks again for spending this time with me. Stay safe, stay healthy. I wish you infinite blessings as the stars light your way.